Hi, I'm Tara and I run Tara Punt Coaching and Bennett's Farm Shop. In December, I ran a webinar in conjunction with the Business Barn, um, all about launching your diversification project. Um, there, it seems that there were lots of questions that were asked that Charlie, the host, and I didn't see any of them. Um, we've since been able to find those questions, so I'm going to go through and answer them now. So the first question is, how do you go about justifying the cost of large infrastructure, e.g. the vending machine, if you can't guarantee the footfall. I appreciate the socials are being pumped as hard as possible, but it's scary to invest if you don't know it's going to work. That is a great question. Um, my husband and I decided that we were either going to make it work or we weren't going to try. Um, we knew that we were going to do all that we could from a marketing and PR perspective. We knew that we were going to literally throw everything at it um, the vending machine was our biggest outlay, um, you know, because I can manage the marketing and PR myself. We haven't had to pay for any of that, which I think has been a huge help. But we honestly went into this with the belief and idea that it has to work. Um, we actually didn't even entertain the idea of it not working. Um, we did have an, a little moment back in the summer of 2022 when suddenly the electricity prices went up. Um, and we suddenly realized that, you know, our, our vending machines have got to be earning even more to warrant um, us being open and to warrant the running costs, the daily running costs of them. Um, and actually, there was a little moment at that point where we just suddenly thought, oh, my gosh, you know, we can't be running this at a loss. We were only a few months in at this point, but we really we have no intention of going into business and running this business at a loss. Um, so at that point, we suddenly thought, right, we just need to ramp it up. So that's actually always been our mindset is how can we keep ramping up? How can we keep making sure that we are getting in front of more people, bringing in new products, doing flyer drops, doing more marketing, doing um, PR, being featured in local press and things um, and just constantly seeing how we can keep growing our audience, growing our footfall um, with the mindset that we will make it work. <laughs> Very determined people here. And I think that really, really helps. So just think about, you know, if you're going into this, are you going into it with a, well, what if it fails? Or are you going into it with the mindset of, we're going to make this work to the absolute best of our ability? Next question is, what are your thoughts on use, using social media influencers to promote a business? Um, very mixed, to be very honest. Um, I think some of them promise the world and massively under deliver. Um, and I think we're at, at, a, at a point now where so many brands just give free things away to influencers. And I think there's a real disingen disingenuity. <laughs> um, I think there's a real lack of genuine content out there at the moment with influencers who, you know, suddenly grew so quickly. Um, and I actually don't know that having an influencer come to your property or promote any of your products is going to actually benefit you in the long run. So personally, I've tried it with a number of my clients, um, a number of different types of businesses, tried it with product based companies, tried it with um, services. So uh, accommodation, those sorts of things, restaurants, pubs, and it just it never really generates what they want it to. So personally, it isn't an approach or a strategy that I would be using this year. Um, I guess it depends on what your outcome is. Is it just to grow the social media? Um, if that is one of your um, kind of goals in terms of using the influencer, maybe have a little think if there's different strategies that you can use for that one. Next question, do you have any methods of gaining customer feedback other than Google reviews and word of mouth? Yeah, so we have a guest book in the farm shop that works really, really well. And there's such lovely comments in there. Um, I regularly take a picture of the guest book and actually share um, on social media. I've got a highlights reel on Instagram that has lots of lovely reviews and testimonials that we've got. Um, we also opened up um, Christmas pre-orders at Christmas Just Gone, where we had lots of people pre-ordering their Christmas products and lots of beef products and things. And um, so in a situation like that, I actually emailed them in January um, earlier this month and just said, you know, how's your products? You know, if you'd be so kind as to leave us a review. Um, and actually any of those that replied with really nice words in the email, I use that and share that on social media as well. The other thing that we did, and we, we ran this, I think it was last summer, was we ran a competition to win a £50 hamper of our products. And we said that to be entered into the competition, all you had to do was take a picture of you being at Bennett's Farm Shop and sharing what it is you love about Bennett's Farm Shop. 
So that was a really good way to actually look at generating more interest and more reach on social media and actually getting people to share what it is that they love about our shop. So that's really nice from a sort of feedback perspective, but also then looking at those people that were sharing what they loved about our shop, they can then promote our shop in front of their audience and their followers in exchange for a 50 pound hamper. So that worked really well. And that is a strategy that I will be using again this year. The next question is, we are opening a milk vending machine on our farm early next year. Very exciting, congratulations. Uh, we, loved, we would love to do an open day, but we have limited parking. Any ideas of what we could do instead? Um, I guess look at the sort of people around you. Is there anybody that you could hire a field from? Um, if that isn't an option, could you put on, um, whether it was little mini buses or something and try and find somewhere that you can park people and then just have a little mini bus ferrying people in. Um, when we had our open day, we've got a field just a little bit along the lane on the other side of the road and people actually were able to walk along the lane. I think it was only 400, was it 400 yards, 400 meters? I can't remember. It wasn't very far. It was literally a five, five minute walk, if that. And actually what was really nice about it was that people could walk along the lane. It was a lovely sunny day and we had our beef cattle in the field, the other side of the road. So people could actually walk past the beef cattle, which I thought was really nice as well. And then out of curiosity, how many people attended the open day? We had just over 400, which is absolutely, absolutely amazing. We had a four hour time window. And honestly, that was such a great day and generated so much in sales. We were able to have so many conversations that we're going to run another one this April, um, which will mark our one year celebration and also just give us an, another chance to get people out to the farm to answer any questions that they got and to actually just tell them a little bit more about us and who we are and what we're doing. So those are the questions from the Launching Your Diversification Project uh, webinar that I hosted back in December. Apologies again that we didn't see any of these questions, um, but I hope that really, really helps. And if there's any other questions, um, feel free to drop myself a message on Instagram. I'm at Tara Coaching, or reach out to Charlie and I'm sure she will pass them on. Thank you.